Warning, this podcast contains spoilers, and I can't speak properly. You've been warned. What's up, everyone, and welcome to TVCaptive.com presents the As Seen on TV podcast for Warehouse 13, Season 5, Episode 1, Endless Terror. This week, Claudia is forced to attack her team. Parachute, uh, paragraph, uh, parasol, Samsonite, I was way off. Rewrites history, and Benedict Valda's alternate version makes his way into our reality. So, we, we have a, a call on the, on the Farnsworth. I better get that. Hey! What's going on? It's Mike. Screwed up Paracelsus' name again, have we? Yes, yes. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I, uh... I don't know. Mm -hmm. Pete couldn't mm -hmm. even get it right this episode. What do you call him? Paranormal? I think he just did it to screw with him. <laughs> yeah. Of mm -hmm. course. That's, that's Pete's job. <laughs> Pete doesn't do anything right. But he does it wrong flawlessly. <laughs> no, he does do it wrong flawlessly. Yes, he does. <laughs> that is an oxymoron. But, yeah. I love this show. I'm so upset. I'm so upset. This is the final season. Final, yeah, final six episodes. I'm kind of... Uh. Yeah. You could, you could clearly see this episode was recorded with the previous batch of episodes. Because um, the previews of, of things to come, you see Pete's hair is extremely long. Yeah, and it looks weird. I'm not used to uh not used to Pete without the buzz cut. Yeah. So, I don't know, his hair was a little long this episode too from what I'm I remembered from what I was used to. So, I don't know, like this this last season in particular has been extremely weird. Um season mm -hmm. 1, 2 and 3 uh they started in July and ended in like October-ish or something like that and then they had the for seasons two and three, they had the Christmas episode. But season four started in July of 2012 and ended in July of 2013. So yeah, I was like, what the... You know, I forgot the show was even airing at that point. They bat, they what? bought, like, 20 episodes they, they grouped up in that season. And uh, th then they announced it was canceled afterwards. I'm like, of course it was canceled. I, I didn't even know it was going on anymore. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I, they broke it up weird. Really uh, weird. This is the weirdest pairing I've ever seen uh, a season uh, do. One season over the entire span of a full year. It's, uh, it was really weird. So, mm. I kind of forgot what what to expect going into this episode, because I didn't rewatch anything. And they did a good job in the recap, the, the very, very beginning, um, where they explained Paracelsus. I was like, oh yeah, he took over the warehouse. And I was like, okay, now and I see. I see. All I can remember is, um, oh, right, Giles was in this show. How could I forgot? Th blah, blah, blah. How could I have forgotten that? Yep. Yeah, I was I was kind of worried this season was gonna lose its charm, uh, just because it's always been about jokes and they take a long time to get to where they need to go, and that's half the fun of it. And it was kind of yeah. This and episode was hilarious. It was. It was great. But I figure for the last six episodes that they're going to try to cram everything they can in and it's going to kind of lose its charm. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't really know for sure because, like I said, this was filmed previously. So I guess the next episode will be the real test of that. But um, still, if this episode is, is any test of, of uh, where they're going, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Maybe at the end of those six episodes, it'll be so good they'll read now. It's over. I know sad it's very sad so um sad were you, face were you surprised <laughs> were you surprised paracelsus uh was able to control claudia uh like she was part of the warehouse it made sense for their explanation of it i mean really the, in this show they could pretty much they could pull the star trek and give you some long-winded mumbo jumbo that explains it perfectly and you just have to you're forced to sit there and go oh, i guess that makes sense they explained it in a matter of two seconds. <laughs> yeah, it, this wasn't even long-winded. It's like, I control the warehouse, and you're a part of it. There, ergo, I control you. Yep. And it's like, oh, well, you should have seen that coming, Claudia. God damn. Mm. I, I saw it coming just before. Uh, mm -hmm. You asked before, I was like, oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> These are Al Capone's Tommy guns. 
What do they do? They shoot bullets! <laughs> Run! <laughs> oh my god, the, there were so many artifacts in this uh, particular episode. I oh, think god. there's somewhere uh, around 15 that were used, and I was originally thinking maybe we can sit here and go through all the artifacts, and then I looked at the list, I was like, no, I don't, I don't want to go through the list of every artifact that was used. But, um... Be some of the notable ones up. was the the grenade from uh, Hitler's uh, <laughs> Hitler bunker. grenade from Hitler's bunker. I don't know what that RPG was. It fired a homing missile. Um, Capone's Tommy guns. We had the looking glass. Carol uh, Lewis's looking glass. Lewis Carroll's looking think, glass. Yes. Um, Carol Lewis. Carol Lewis. Um, what else did <laughs> they have? I don't. I can't even pronounce the Greek guy's sundial. Yeah. Uh, Schwarzschild's pocket watch, and some other guy's telescope. Yeah, so there there was a bunch used. Uh, there was an official list somewhere, but um, but she's typing. As soon as she types it, I'm like, okay, he's a villain. He wants to do something bad. What's he gonna do? And she starts typing in, and you know, comes up a Schwarzschild and, and the name. I'm like, he's gonna make a black hole. Great. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. But that was kind of clever using like four different artifacts together to create uh hg wells time machine make it actually time travel um, yeah so he, he basically went back in time and created this alternate reality do you like the way warehouse 13 addressed time travel yes i i really liked it like nah, 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 don't explain it it <laughs> makes my head hurt no matter how many shows they do this in they never get it right <laughs> I, no, I love but... pete mm-hmm. i love pete that's just he's Kind of, in a way, breaking the fourth wall, but he's not at the same time. Because he's Pete. He's just awesome like that. Mm -hmm. So, within this alternate reality, we saw alternate versions of Hugo, Vanessa, uh, Abigail. Were you kind of expecting Lena to come back? Like, uh, they killed her at the end of, or somewhere in the middle of last season. Um, And I was really disappointed we didn't get Lena. Uh, I can, I guess I could be okay with it. You know, they killed her off and everything, but I like Lena. But they killed off other people, too. True. They, like, like, um, Valda. Well, I, well, this was alternate timeline, Valda. Exactly, so we should have alternate timeline, uh... L- Lena. Lena. Who knows what happened to alternate timeline Lena? Maybe she's dead. Know. She was. Um, we also met, when they went back uh, in time, we met uh, Le- Lisa Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci's uh, granddaughter, who was played by um, Rebecca Mater, who now plays um, the Wicked Witch in Once Upon a Time. So yep. they are just cram-packing, and she was previously um, Charlotte on um, Lost. So they're, mm-hmm. they're, pr- they're just packing in people uh, for, for this final season, which is great. Which is great. Well... I'm- I'm surprised uh, they were able to get both um, Mark Shepard and uh, uh, Rebecca Mater back for, uh, or not back, but she, <clears throat> Rebecca was never in this, but um, to get them in when they're both involved currently in TV shows that were probably filmed in the middle of filming when uh, when they started yeah. filming these. So They got that. Um, like the end of last season, supposedly this season, I mean, they got two people from Buffy. They got... Uh, yeah. Anthony Head, I think, is the guy who plays Giles, and they got the guy who plays Spike, James Marsters, whose Omi's mom has a, a crush on. Yeah. Speaking of Giles, we, we need a renewal of Who Done It. Oh yes, we do. Hopefully, hopefully that'll come back this summer. That was a fun show. It was. I mean, the whole game tangent, tiny tangent here. The whole premise of it seemed kind of like. How can you make this into a fair and, you know, yeah, how can you make this into a fair contest or whatever yeah. without it seeming utterly ridiculous? Well, they seemed to make it work, and it was still utterly ridiculous, but I liked it. That's it why was. I liked it. Just like this show is completely and utterly ridiculous, and that's why I love it. You get most, like, I, I explain this to everybody when, when I go to talk about this show. You get shows that are cheesy, and mm-hmm. they try not to be cheesy, and it comes off bad. Mm-hmm. You get shows like this, where it's cheesy, and they know they're cheesy, and they lay on the cheese, and it makes it so much more amazing. Yes, exactly, because, you know, Pete, why do I never remember his name? I I keep... Latimer. God, 
Yeah, he was in um he was in Bones that actor for so long, and I keep you know confu- getting I, I keep for some reason wanting to call him Booth, even though they're two completely different people, and right. someone in the other room will kill me for confusing David Boreanaz with anybody. But um, yeah, he just he does he lays down the cheese like just flat on every kind of cheese you can imagine and it's god damn it it's amazing yeah and it's it's not even um <laughs> are, you, are you calling from a farm yes that explains the goat it's a goat so, over there <laughs> so um i don't know like it's not even pete that lays on the cheese too like you had uh, Jinxie, you know, uh, the, the, he had so much of it. They all bring the cheese. They do, but Pete he's, especially. Pete is, you know, the, he's, you know, up there on the mountain of cheese, but, you know, they all, even Artie brings the cheese a he little does. bit. And, and Micah too, <laughs> but just... He's she's... got a stack of car batteries. I mean, a mountain of them all wired <laughs> together. It's like, even though, even if you use the word emergency, this is very, very illegal. <laughs> On the list of illegal things that I've done that were, in fact, illegal, this would rank as the least illegal. In fact, and he gives them alligator clamps. Like, here you go. Do you, do you want the? Do you want one or both? No, it's like just Already. make sure that make sure that when you stick them in the shield, you stick them at the same time. No, 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 no. You take one, I take one. This way, I have a chance of surviving. Okay, you take the red one. As soon as you said that, I'm like, oh great, Artie's got the ground. He's gonna be fine. Yep. I said and the then, same thing. And then you know. <laughs> Let alone they could have just walked through the thing the whole time. It's like, I, I love you coat in the car and the purple goo to drive through the shield. And I'm like, this isn't going to work. No. This is amazing, but it's not going to work. Not one bit. Not one bit. Oh, boy. So then when they went back and uh, Lisa Da Vinci, uh, she kind of helps them uh, stop the, what was it, the elephant horn that scared the snakes? I don't remember what that artifact was called. I don't even know that they gave it a name. It was the only known elephant. It was the tusk of the only known elephant to have been killed by a boa constrictor. Ah, okay. So, uh, when that uh, Lisa let out this this whistle, and uh, all of a sudden we see this this purple bird named Isabella, which she referred to as a purple swampin, uh, come yeah. and snag the artifact. Yeah. And then seemed utterly confused why the warehouse of the future did not use a pterodactyl. Yeah. <laughs> more like a phoenix. I don't, uh, I don't they even were, know. I think Pete and Micah were more terrified that they don't use purple goo. Yeah. Uh, and I'm curious now if the purple goo came from cremating the purple swampin. <laughs> Then you know, see, cremating would make ashes. For goo, we're talking fermenting. We're talking killing it and locking it in a fifty-five gallon drum for a hundred years or something. Yeah. Oh God, that was. Didn't they? Didn't they complain that the purple goo smelled really bad? Yes, they did. <laughs> yeah. Oh so. boy. Maybe maybe we have some unofficial confirmation of where the purple goo has come from. Don't want to think about that. That's lovely. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I don't know. What did you think of the alternate versions of Hugo and Vanessa? Um, they were pretty much Hugo and Vanessa, just, you know, with a gun to their head. And married. And, well, married with a gun to their head. With children. Married with children and a gun to their children's <laughs> head, which is making them do stuff. Yeah. So it wasn't a gun to their heads. No. So, yeah. It was, um, no surprise there. It's kind of uh, cool to see them again. I like how they work them in. Yeah, yeah. I love Hugo. Hugo's he's, awesome. He's nuts. He is. He's mm-hmm. certifiably insane. Yes, he is. And he snores when he sleeps. Yes, he does. And has a heart something. He, yeah, he has... This heart disease runs in his family, so he's afraid to get, you know, tests done. That, that. So... I don't know, through this this episode, the running theme was Paracelsus is using the artifacts to um, conduct, like, scientific experiments and try to create unknown things with, um, I don't know, the combination of these artifacts or whatever. Uh, w- what do you think about that? Like, obviously, he's using it for bad, but do you think, you personally, do you think the, the artifacts should remain on the shelf and never used, or do you think that they should try to use these artifacts for some good? 
Um, I'll take the... See, artifacts that wouldn't utterly destroy the world, yes, experiment with them, see if there's a way to use them for good. I mean, or try to figure out how to, you know, try to understand how they work, because already the very, very, very first episode of this show already describes the warehouse as, he's like, you know, if you were to take... You know, uh, what did he say, a radio? He gave some technological example. He says, if you were to take this and show it to Thomas Jefferson, he would take it and lock it up in a box and hide it away somewhere until he was sure it wasn't going to kill him. And that's basically what they do with everything they shove in this warehouse. They lock it up in a box, put it on a shelf, and hide it away until they're sure it's not going to kill them. So if they can do that with a whole bunch of artifacts, figure out ways that they're not going to kill them... Then, yeah, use them for good. I, I wouldn't go, I mean, you know, Paracelsus was going about it like the Nazis went about it, which, uh, no. Human experimentation, while there's arguments for it being good or bad, but the way they're doing it is very bad. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you want, you want human experimentation? Look, uh, look at clinical trials for new drugs. That's basically human experimentation. Right. So, I mean, if. The, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It, it seems like they inadvertently have been using the artifacts for good all along, um, but it ends up when they get discovered or get stolen or or something like that, uh, and then they they realize that it's good. But then they end up putting it on the shelf anyway. So I'm hoping by the end of the series here, uh, they could find some use for the artifacts other than just keeping them in storage. Mm hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but then we had, uh, <clears throat> what, what king was it that had the tuning forks? Um, Prince? I don't remember now, but, I um, didn't catch it. I didn't catch his name. Yeah. <clears throat> so they go, they, they use these tuning forks to, um, to travel to the alternate universes without losing their memories and, and keeping all their, you know, consciousness and everything through it. Not even that. He used the tuning, he gave everybody the tuning forks just in case, the tuning forks kept them grounded in their own time continuum. Right. If they he didn't if they didn't, weren't holding the tuning forks when Paracelsus went back in time, they too would have altered into the alternate reality versions of themselves. Right. Yeah. So they didn't because tuning fork. Yeah. So the tuning fork was awesome. Um but it led to unforeseen consequences when one of them went missing when the return of Mark Shepard, a.k.a. Valda. A.k.a. the sexiest Irish man alive. Shut up over there. <laughs> um, I, I'm sorry, I like Mark. Every sci-fi thing that Mark Shepard is in... He's in, like, every sci-fi thing ever. With the exception of his, like, one-episode appearance on Voyager, because they forced him to use an American accent. Yeah, that was kind of awkward. That's the only time I thought he was, you know, kind of not, no, but he's awesome. I loved him in Firefly, I love him in Supernatural, in Warehouse 13, it was another show that's come, not coming to mind. He's been in so many. He has been in so many. It's, there's, there's almost too many to, to name. It's like over 30 shows. Uh, with actors like him, yeah, there's way always way too many to name. But he always has like this minor role. He's never like a, a main main cast member. No, he's never the you know the leading. He needs his own leading role. Man, he needs his own leading role in a show. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, so Battlestar Galactica. Yes, that Galactica. Was... He was definitely in that. Um. Sorry. So last we saw Volda, um, he sacrificed himself to save Pete, Micah, and Mrs. Frederick. Um, he was the uh, the region expert on Warehouse 2, and when that was reactivated for... Um, I forget who reactivated it, but um, it was in Season 2. H.G. Wells. Yeah, that's right. The Noah and Trident. That's right, yes. So H.G. Wells in Season 2 reactivated it, and he, he gave his life for them. So... Mm -hmm. I never thought we'd see Valda again, but mm. apparently in this timeline, since Pete and Mike uh, have the tuning forks, they couldn't have done all that. So, um, Valda is one of Paracelsus's um, bodyguards. Yeah. And uh, 
kind of warehouse manager, whatever, something like that. Oh, God, I love Pete's face. He looks around the corner. He's like, what? They have Borg? <laughs> yeah, so Paracels was even, like, cloning or replicating artifacts of somehow, you know, some sort, so. Once he figured out how to, you know, how they worked and how they were made, replicate them. I'm one. I'm curious if he uh, he ever went back into other eras uh, during this timeline because he he went back to Warehouse Nine and was the uh, the warehouse keeper through Warehouse Nine all the way up to thirteen. So, well, he murdered the regents, made sure that there was no he was in command at all times, and there was no other command structure of regents for five hundred plus years. And yeah, he made his own thing. So, I don't think he had to go back in time ever after that. Yeah, but I'm curious if he went back in time and started taking artifacts instead of, like, actually replicating them, if he was just taking them out of their timeline and just creating multiple instances of them. Maybe. They didn't explain that very well. I mean, you yeah. just assumed he was replicating them. Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, but we see him come back uh, right after they bronze Paracelsus. So now we have two Paracelsuses in the bronze sector. Mm-hmm. One of which was put in a mummy tomb named something... I don't remember his name, but he was labeled Egyptian terrorist. Yes, because there were so many of those. It written, you know, in some... <laughs> yeah, written was... in magic marker. Written in magic marker from the 1500s. Like, they had magic markers in the 1500s? I don't right. know. Right. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. The one thing we forgot about, the probably the line that made me... Sp- spit drink out of my nose was you know you know the the regents they usually meet in a public place like you know this or an an, odd an olive garden and she's like that's it they're at the olive garden (laughs) and instantly I mean okay they're at an actual olive garden he's like no white chocolate raspberry cheesecake don't you tempt me (laughs) I yeah, as soon his as, face as soon when as she, she said, said they're it, at I the op- yeah they're yeah. at the o- the Olive Garden, and as soon as she said that, his face. <laughs> I want it. Yeah, okay. I knew anyway. exactly what she meant, and I could. I was waiting for for the, like the big reveal for Pete. Yeah. Oh, and an actual garden. Yes. Yeah, poor Pete. Poor Pete. Um, so next week is the episode, uh, Secret Services, uh, Mm -hmm. in which Pete and Micah encounter two Secret Service agents that force them to question their own relationship, while Artie Mm -hmm. attempts to show Claudia the truth about her sister. So that brings us to Claire Donovan. Yeah. Uh, she's, she's the daughter of Claudia and Josh, the daughter, the sister of Claudia and Joshua. Um... Mm -hmm. And uh, she was thought to have been killed in a car crash that also killed their parents. Yep. Uh, but we found out last season through Artie um, that that was not the case when he used um, a sample of her blood to bring Claudia out of the, the bronzing process. Yep. Um, all that we know about her is that she's a very dangerous woman. If she's very dangerous. Why is she not bronzed? Maybe she's not dangerous in the sense of misuse of artifacts, terror to the world sort of danger. Maybe she's just a dangerous person, as in the countless dangerous people who roam the streets every day in every city worldwide. Could be. Could be. Anyway, maybe maybe she's that kind of dangerous. Yeah. I'm super and excited not... to uh, to find out some information about her this, this next episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Big questions here. We're just going to real quick series uh, finale predictions. We got to do it now. Got to do it now. Series finale predictions. Pete is going to confess how much he loves Micah. Do you think they're going to end up together? Maybe. I don't know. That's a tough one. We we as viewers want them to end up together. Yes. I mean, there's a part of the preview where she just looks at Pete and goes, you know, I liked it better when all you did was stare at my boobs. (laughs) So... (laughs) There's some tension coming up there. I think the closing scene of the warehouse is going to have them slowly zoom out of the front door, and that football is going to hit the door again. That would be amazing. That has to be the, right before the fade to black of the series finale. The football has to hit the door, and that's it. 
I 100% it. That would be the perfect ending. I don't know how they lead up to it, however they work. If, you know, if the warehouse survives and isn't just, you know, a crater right. or transported to the moon. Even no, if it is a crater. Even if it's transported to the moon, I want that football to hit the door. Even if it's a crater, I want the football to land in the crater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The football needs to be in this this episode. I don't care. Um, so, Warehouse 13, obviously, will be done. Mm -hmm. Sad face. I like but, the show. Does that mean we won't have a Warehouse 14 show? Oh, that's actually pretty good. That's, that's good. Mm. Depends on the ending. Um, depends on, I guess, how well this season six episodes does. I mean, they were canceling. Unfortunately, I'm going to tell you right now, the ratings for this episode were not impressive. They were probably the third or fourth lowest of the entire series. That's probably because a lot of people might not have heard that it was, you know, a lot of people might think it's canceled and really only the fans who are paying attention are going to actually watch these six I mean, these six episodes are kind of fan service almost. Right. That's pretty much exactly what they are. But, I mean, they did cancel it due to declining ratings in the first place. Yep. I mean, the show never had the greatest ratings in the first, you know, to begin with. They had decent ones in season one. Oh, yeah, exactly. Because it was a new show on sci fi, and people had heard, well, hey, sci fi is putting out some, you know, good new shows. Like, yeah. But, yes, it just. Actually, I have the ratings here. It was three... They averaged three million viewers per episode all season one. And then season two was two and a half million. Premiere was three. And then season three was also two and a half million. But right after the second half of the episode... The second half of the season just tanked by a million viewers average. Yeah. And season then, four was just straight down. It just... It started off at two and it just... I think it hit a low of like 1.03, something like that. It was like so, the 17th episode or something. Yeah, I don't know. It was uh, it was pretty low. I think that's what um, yeah. Actually, you know what? There, there's gonna be a warehouse 14. Not a show, but an actual warehouse 14 because I'm looking here and the fifth episode of the season is called Chengu Shishi or something like that, and apparently it's Mandarin for warehouse 15. Warehouse oh. 14. Warehouse 14. Warehouse 14. Excellent. So. Wait, it's good. There's going to be a Warehouse 14 and it's going to be in China. Excellent. <laughs> I don't know this. I probably just spoiled how many episodes, but. Whatever. I really don't know this. This is a prediction. This warehouse is... 14 is going to be in China. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Um, Mike, where can the people find you? Here on Twitter at, you know, that Twitter thing, at Philadren, T H I L L A D R E N. I was muted for that. You can find me down below at Phenomenon, P H E N O M E D O M. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. I, I'm not quite sure how long I was muted for. Probably a while. Yeah. So, I don't know. My uh, my last few questions, if I was in fact muted for them, you will have to lip read. Oh, well. Uh, you can find I us hope. all on tvcaptive.com, as well as uh, on Facebook, Gmail, G+, uh, Twitter, and right here on YouTube at backslash podcast. For some more podcasts of some of your favorite TV shows. Um, until sometime next week. This The show airs on Mondays. So, until sometime next week. We'll see you guys later. Later. Oh.